Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com. In this video, we're going to give you a tour of Google's Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich. Let's get to it. So if you want to run this on your own computer, we'll link to a video that shows you how to run the emulator on your own computer. Um, and a little bit of a preface, when you run the emulator, it will be slow. Uh, so that obviously doesn't represent the speed of ice cream sandwich. It's just the fact that you're running an emulator on your computer. So let's get started. You might be wondering, where are those virtual buttons that are present on the Galaxy Nexus? Uh, well, in the emulator, you don't get those virtual buttons. We have buttons off to the right. You can't see them in this frame. Um, but what's going to happen is when Ice Cream Sandwich comes onto legacy hardware, hardware that's already out there, the home button tap and hold of the home button will bring up the multitask UI because you might have seen that the Galaxy Nexus has its own multitask button. So that is a bit of explanation. So here we have the home screen UI for Ice Cream Sandwich and we can swipe to the left. I'm not actually going to swipe, I'm going to just uh, click on the uh, left button here on the, on the D-pad or on the keyboard, whichever is easier for you. And it's just like standard Android, but there's a lot different. Um, for example, let's move this email um, shortcut over here. You'll notice a lot of things are taken right out of the honeycomb holographic UI. So if we tap and hold on this bookmark wid widget, which looks exactly the same as honeycomb, we can resize it just like honeycomb. And just like honeycomb, if we can resize it here, we can scroll through this widget, kind of like a mini application. Very nice. Um, so let's go into the application list. And actually, let's go into the notification tray first. They've redone the notification tray. Now with the notifications, you can swipe notifications, individual ones, off of the screen if you want to deal with them later. So if I swipe that, it's gone. Imagine having, having 10 notifications, and five of them you want to deal with, five of them you don't care about. With the swipe, it really helps you um, sort of hone in on the notifications that you want to action on later. Now I've actually set up my email, my personal email, with this device. Um, so it's got my contacts, has calendar, and email. So everything's working. It's pretty cool. I can actually show you everything or uh, most of the functionality. So let's go into the application tray first before we talk about email, contacts, and calendar. Here's what it looks like when you want to pick an app. If you want to put it on your home screen, just like gingerbread, you tap and hold, and boom, you can drop it on a home screen, or you can put it on another home screen, kind of like in Honeycomb. So let's go back to the previous uh, home screen, the main home screen here. Let's go back into the app tray. Now we have widgets up here, and it does crash from time to time because you know it doesn't work perfectly. Um, so we're going to go back into the app tray here and go to widgets one more time. Should work. There we go. So here are the widgets. Now they are stored within the app tray rather than within the um, within another menu system on the home screen. So we can scroll through our widgets tap and drag them to the home screen, just like you can do with individual apps. Now I mentioned the multitask UI. If you tap and hold the home button, or if it's a device like the Galaxy Nexus, you will have its own button. So if I tap and hold the home button, you'll see up comes a task switcher that looks just like Honeycomb. In fact, it's the same one. Um, you're supposed to get little previews of the programs here, uh, but in this case, you don't, probably because it's kind of buggy here, but you can flick through with your finger uh, the recent most applications that you've used. Pretty cool way to flip through your applications. It's going to be great. If we hit the menu button on the home screen, uh, we will get these three items, kind of a consolidated list. We've get, we have wallpaper, manage apps, and system settings. And here's a very familiar wallpaper picker that we've seen from other versions of Android. And let's jump into settings now. And I should mention that settings is now a shortcut in the notification tray. So I click on settings up there, and boom, here we are. Scroll to the top and see what we have. We've got this really cool data usage area, and didn't want to go there. So we can actually see which programs are using which data usage. Super cool, especially for people that aren't on unlimited data plans. You can also specify to get an alarm or to shut off your data completely if you reach a certain threshold of data use. And we really can't do much here with that. It's not set up, obviously. We're not connected to a real network here. Uh, so let's go back. And all of the other settings just look different. They're basically the same. So if you go into sound, it's just a beautiful interface here using the new Ice Cream Sandwich system font, green checks, 
kind of inherited from Honeycomb. Go into display, same kind of options that you would get in Gingerbread. And it's starting to get a little bit slow here. So let's go down to battery, see if we have anything there. Same kind of thing with battery. So again, a lot of the same settings, just a different look and feel. Let's jump into the calendar now and see what that looks like. And we're in the calendar preferences. Okay, so here is what agenda view looks like, and it should actually be, I guess, color-coded here on the left uh, if you have multiple calendars, but I only have one, so it's gray. What we can do is we can change to month view, week view, day view, kind of like any standard calendar, and it shows you with little, uh, little gray bars whether you're busy that day, what time of the day you're busy, and so on and so forth. So much improved UI there. Let's jump into email, and hopefully there's nothing crazy in there. Okay, so here we are in email, and it's just an improved email interface. Again, it comes right out of Honeycomb. When you check a certain item, uh, you will get these buttons along the bottom here, and they're pretty self-explanatory. So I'm going to trash this item, and it says message deleted. It goes away. If we click the menu button, we'll get some settings. Let's take a look at the email settings. Look at the general email settings. Message text size. Let's see what it looks like on Tiny. Auto advance. Choose which screen to show after you delete a message. Simple, simple things here. And if we go back, it should change this text size, or not really. Um, so let's go back to the home screen and check out a little bit more of the features here. So we've got a dock along the bottom, which contains the phone by default. Here's the new phone dial pad. Let's see what it looks like when you call someone. So let's call 1-800-COLLECT. C O L L E C T. Give them a call and take a look at the new phone UI. And here, here it goes. Big, huge picture. If you've got a picture caller ID associated with this person, a big red end call button, and your typical options in here as well dial pad, speaker phone, mute, hold, and add another caller. And so go back to the home screen here. And let's go into contacts real quick. Now, contacts, like a lot of honeycomb, like a lot of ice cream sandwich apps, has this sort of pivot-like thing, which kind of reminds us of Windows Phone 7. So if we swipe to the right, we can see favorites. And we, we have this kind of tabbed interface along the top. And we can either get to those tabs by tapping individually on the tabs, uh, or we can do that swipe to the right. And if you had pictures associated with these contacts, they would come up with beautiful pictures. And uh, there are some pretty cool stuff that has happened in Ice Cream Sandwich to contacts. We'll have a full rundown of that. We actually get a device in here with Ice Cream Sandwich that is a lot smoother in operation than this emulator. So again, that was a look at Ice Cream Sandwich. Google has gone a long way to improve Android to make it look a lot nicer, more elegant. Uh, again, we'll post a link on the video here on how to run the emulator on your own. It's the kind of thing you could spend 20, 30 minutes messing around with. You'll find all kinds of cool stuff in there. Uh, so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching. That's it for now.